Let's open our Bibles to 1 Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion. Now you can put your name there. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Adeboye for the time to favor him, yea, the third time is come. Let's read it one more time. It, it sounds so good. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Adeboye for the time to favor him, yea, the third time is come. If you receive that, let me hear you say amen loud and clear. Tonight we want to talk about operating under divine favor. From this text, we discover that when a man's time of favor comes, God will do two basic things. How many things? Two basic things. Number one, he will arise. Number two, he will show mercy. Only those two basic things. Thou will arise and show mercy. For the time to favor her, yea, the third time has come. When the time for favor comes, God does two basic things. Number one, he arises. Now, Psalm 68, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 68, verse 1 to 3, he says, Let God arise, and his enemies will scatter. Hmm. Now, when we say the enemies of God will scatter, the question that comes to your mind immediately is, who are the enemies of God? Well, when you look at Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5, Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 5 you discover that the enemies of God are the enemies of his children there was a man called Saul of Tarsus he was persecuting Christians he was throwing them to prison he was killing them he was doing all manners of evil against them and then one day he got permission from the leaders to go to Damascus that if he should find any Christian there at all he would take them bound back to Jerusalem so that they can be dealt with on the way the Lord met him and knocked them down from his horse do you know those who are persecuting you are about to be knocked down And then God spoke to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And Saul said, ah, how can I be persecuting? I don't even know who you are. Uh, he said, well, it's me you are persecuting when you are persecuting my children. You see, those who are tormenting children of God, they don't know that they are in serious danger. Because they are actually fighting against God. And when God arises, his enemies will scatter. So if I were you, I would congratulate the man next to me and say, your enemies are about to be scattered. <laughs> when you go through the scriptures, you'll find several examples of what happened when God arose. For example, if you read Exodus chapter 3, and you read it from verse 7 to 8, Exodus 3, verse 7 to 8, it is when God arose for Israel 
that their deliverance from Egypt came. He said to Moses, he said, I have seen the afflictions of my children, Israel. I have seen what the Egyptians are doing unto them. You see, many times we think that God does not see. But God is not blind. Everything that is happening here on earth is observing. And when it is time in his infinite wisdom to arise, he will arise. And I have a feeling that the time for him to arise is now. It's about to arise for me. It's about to arise for my family. It's about to arise for his church. It's about to arise for Nigeria. It's about to arise for the world. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. When you read Judges 15, if you take the story from verse 1 to 15, Judges 15, verse 1 to 15, it tells you the story of Samson dealing with the Philistines. And then the Philistines decided that they were going to revenge. And so the children of Israel decided, let's sacrifice Samson. His relatives came to him, they bound him, and they handed him over to the Philistines. I once preached a sermon on when God is silent. When they got something on the mountain top and they were binding him, God didn't say anything. When they brought him down the hill, God kept quiet. When they handed him over to the enemy, God didn't say a word. Until the enemies began to rejoice, thinking that, ah, now we got him. Then suddenly, God arose. God will arise for somebody here today. And when God arose, suddenly, all the ropes binding something, the Bible said it was burnt as if it touched fire. And somehow, they landed in where there was a jawbone of an ass already waiting. Do you know the weapon that God will use to deal with your enemy is within your reach right now? And before we knew what, what was happening, 1,000 of the enemies lay dead and the others fled. When you read 1 Samuel 17, you can read the whole story from verse 1 to 51. 1 Samuel 17, verse 1 to 51. For 40 days, Goliath was terrorizing Israel. He was getting up in the morning, terrorizing them, in the evening, terrorizing them, and God kept quiet. But one day, God arose. And when God arose in the morning, by the night time, the head of Goliath was already gone. Tonight, in the name that's above every other name, the Goliath in your life is about to lose his head. When you read Daniel chapter 3, if you read it from verse 13 to 30, Daniel 3, verse 13 to 30, you will see the story there of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the king said that they must bow down and worship him, and worship his idol, and they refused, God kept quiet. When the king was boasting, I'm going to deal with them now. I'm going to throw them into the fairy furnace. I'm going to make the fire several times hotter than normal. God kept quiet. When they were binding the three of them, God kept quiet. When they were carrying them towards the fire, God didn't say a word. But just before they landed in the fire, God arose. Do you know that whatever problem followed you here tonight will not follow you back home? Because the time for God to arise for you has come. If you believe that, let me hear your hallelujah. Daniel chapter 6 
And you read it from verse 18 to 28, Daniel 6, 18 to 28, you will see there that when, in fact, you can read it from the beginning to the end, when the enemies of Daniel were holding their meetings, plotting how they would destroy him, they said something. They said, oh, we know him. There's no way you can corrupt him. The only way you can get him is to ask him not to pray. We pray to his God. You know, the enemy had been saying that concerning many of you. They said the only thing you cannot get him not to do is not to go to the Holy Ghost night. He will go there to pray. So let's wait till he goes. Well, God is watching and is listening. When they said, let's get him into the den of lions, God didn't say a word. When they threw him into the den of lions and they rolled the stone across the, the mouth so that they would not be able to escape, God arose. And suddenly lions became like lambs. Do you know that all those things that have been frightening you, very soon now, they'll be toys in your hand. Let me give you just one more example. Because the Bible is full of what happens when God arose. In Acts 16, verse 25 to 34. Acts 16, 25 to 34. The Bible tells us about what happened to Paul and Silas. You know, before that, they had already cast out a demon out of a girl. The people got angry. They beat them. They threw them to prison. And they told the jailer, keep them safe because by tomorrow morning, we're going to kill them. And then the Bible says, at midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray. And they began to praise God. They were doing what we are doing tonight. And suddenly, God arose. And when God arose, the earth began to shake. And very soon, there was an earthquake. And the prison doors were flung open. Every man's bound were loosed. The man that they said should keep these people safe so that they can kill them tomorrow is now the one who began to wash their wounds, who began to give them food. I have good news for somebody here tonight because your time of favor has come your enemy will become your servant so number one when the time of favor comes god will arise number two he will show mercy I can go through the scriptures from the beginning to the end to show you all those who received the mercy from the Lord what was the outcome but the Bible says something in Lamentation chapter 3 verses 22 and 23 Lamentation 3 verses 22 and 23 it says it is of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed Thank God it is renewed every morning. But for the mercy of God, how many of us will be alive today? If God had not been merciful unto us, many of us were born into a family where the father probably had six or seven wives. And out of the six or seven wives, maybe five of them are witches. And maybe your mommy alone is the only one who didn't know anything at all. And yet the Almighty God preserved your life. How many people are in that category? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. It is of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. And because of that mercy, that is why you are going to get your breakthrough tonight. Because when you read Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 45 Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 45 the Bible tells us the story of a leper who came to Jesus Christ and said I know you can make me clean if you are willing in other words I know you have the power but I'm not even sure I qualify for a miracle the Bible said Jesus Christ did something very strange he touched the leper 
And the Bible tells us that you must not touch a leper because if you touch a leper, you yourself, you become unclean. But the one who made the law broke the law. Why? Because they said he was moved by compassion. Mercy moved him. Tonight, every law that is against you shall be broken because God will show you mercy in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 9, verses 15 and 16, Romans 9, 15 and 16, the Bible says, God said, I will be merciful unto whom I will be merciful. And I'm sure I am the one he's talking to now. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It is, it is, a, it is therefore not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but of God that showeth mercy. Nobody succeeds in this world except God has mercy on him. And he will have mercy on you tonight in Jesus' name. Therefore, I am going to take just one case study, one example, to show you things that will happen when a man is operating under divine favor. And the example I'm going to use is the example of Joseph. I'm going to mention seven things that will happen to somebody who is operating under divine favor. Number one, you cannot kill a man operating under divine favor. Nobody can kill him. Genesis 37, verse 19 to 20. Genesis 37, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, when the brothers of Joseph saw him coming, what was it they said? Ah, behold, the dreamer cometh. Let us kill him. They said, let us kill him. <laughs> I mean, ten big men decided that the time has come for a young boy to be killed. But they forgot something. They forgot that this man was operating under divine favor. I want to assure every one of you here tonight, you will not die before your date. How do I know? Because Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, the Almighty God said, listen, he said, I am God, and there is no one else. He said, I am the only one who can kill and I'm the only one who can make a life. And he said, there's no man who can deliver out of my hand. In other words, nobody can kill anybody God does not kill. And I can assure you, God is not going to kill you at all. So when God arises, when there are enemies who have made up their minds that they want to kill you, and then God arises, what will happen? Deuteronomy 28 verse 7. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 says, and the enemies that God will cause, the enemies that rise against you to be smitten before your face. Do you know what that one means? You are standing still, enemies arose against you, and while you are watching, you just see the enemy collapsing. You don't have to do anything at all. He said, God will cause the enemy that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. He said, when they come against you one way, they will flee. How many ways? Several ways. When God arises for you, nobody can kill you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 17, Isaiah 54, verse 17, he says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. If God arises for you, every weapon of the enemy will be neutralized. Uh, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 41, verse 10 to 13, 
Isaiah 41, verse 10 to 13. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, all you have left is faith in God. He asked me to tell you that will be enough. <laughs> Daddy said there's someone here tonight. He said, the doctors are confused about your case. He asked me to tell you, I will heal you all the same. I saw 41 verse 10 to 13. I saw 41 verse 10 to 13. God says, I will help you. He said, I will hold you by the right hand. And I say, I will help you. He said, those who are sins against you will be as nothing. He said, you will look for them. You won't even find them. You see, when God arises for you, those who say they want to kill you, they will scatter. And that's going to happen tonight in Jesus' name. Number two, when a man is operating under divine favor, not only can you not kill him, you cannot kill his dreams. There are several people who just like Joseph had some very big dreams big dreams in Genesis 37 verse 5 to 11 Genesis 37 verse 5 to 11 Joseph had a dream and he, he, he told his brothers and every even an idiot could interpret the dream this little boy said the dream I had is that all you my brothers you are going to bow down before me. <laughs> and the brother said, you, we will see. He didn't stop there. He had another dream. Again, he dreamt. And this time, he saw not even just the brothers. He said, even my father and my mother, they, they too, they are going to be bowing down. Then they all said, all right, we will see. Now, so when they now saw him coming, they said, all right, we will kill him, and when he dies, his dreams will die with him. Many of us, when we were young, we had wonderful dreams. Some of us, by now, as we are getting old, we begin to wonder what's going to happen to those dreams. I have good assurance for you if you are operating under divine favor, those dreams. As big as they were, they will come to pass. Oh, because in Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 to 21, Genesis 15, verse 15 to 21, those brothers, the same brothers who wanted to kill Joseph and kill his dreams, came, fell down before him, and said, We be your servants. I'm assuring someone here tonight, all those who have ganged up against you, who said they must destroy your dreams, very soon they will come and bow down before you. Why? Because when a man is operating under divine favor, God arises for him. Now God said in his word, Psalm 33, from verse 10 to 11, Thank you, Father. The, the Lord said there's someone here again tonight who is asking the question again and again. When will the battle be over? The Lord asked me to tell you very, very soon. Psalm 33, verse 10 to 11. The Bible says that the Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to naught. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. But the counsel of the Lord shall stand forever. So it doesn't matter what they plan against you. It doesn't matter all their evil machinations. 
as long as God is on your side, the original plan of God for your life shall be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Your dreams too, every one of them shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Number three, when you are operating under divine favor, at home you will shine. According to Genesis 37 verse 3, Genesis 37 verse 3, among all the children of his father, Joseph was special. What made him special? Oh, they say he was the son of the old age. But that's the excuse. He was special because God made him special. Tell your neighbor, you may not know it, but I am special to God. <laughs> and so, so he, 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 his father, his father made him a coat of many colors. He, what made him special? You know, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 16, verses 1 and 2. He says, arise and shine. Why? For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It is not anything particular that made Joseph special. It is the glory of God upon his life. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 to 13. 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 to 13. When God wanted to pick a king in the house of Jesse, he picked David. David shone among his brethren. God says, I should tell a particular girl. He said, because I reserve the best to the last. Your celebration will be superior to those who have come before you. Now this is for someone. And I said there's someone here tonight. He said very soon you will know the meaning of all things work together for good to them that love them. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said you have been relegated to the back seat. He said I will bring you to the front row. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 15 to 18, you will discover that when an evil spirit began to trouble King Saul, and the servants of King Saul said to him, huh, Sir, you need a musician to play so that these evil forces will leave you alone. He said, Okay, get me someone. And they said, We know one man who was an extremely good musician. And he was a valiant man of valor. They were talking about David. Even at home, he was already shining. And in the name that's above every other name, from now on, you too will begin to shine at home. <laughs> Number four. When a man is walking or operating under divine favor, even in strange lands, he will shine. When Joseph got to Egypt in Genesis 39, verse 1 to 6, Genesis 39, verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, almost immediately he arrived in Potiphar's house, he began to shine. Potiphar just took a look at him and saw the way things were going and said, I hand over everything to you. How do you hand over everything to a prisoner? A prisoner that you have just bought, a prisoner that you don't know anything about, but because God was arising for him. Abroad, he was shining. The Bible says in Psalm 121 verse 8, Psalm 121 verse 8, God says, I will keep your 
coming and you're going out. You know that was it doesn't matter where you go, you will see shine there. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 to 20. Daniel 1, verse 8 to 20. The Bible tells us that when Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel got to the foreign land where they were taken into slavery, the Almighty God showed them favor. And by the time they finished their training, they were ten times better than all other wise men. Abroad, they shine. Now, in Genesis 26, verse 1 to 14, Genesis 26, verse 1 to 14, Isaac was in a foreign land, and there was famine in the land. And because he obeyed God, God made him to shine. At the time when there was famine in the land, he prospered so much, he became the envy of the entire nation. I have good news for someone here tonight, very, very soon. The old nation will know about you. <laughs> I am prophesying to someone here today. Anywhere you go, you will shine. Number five. When a man is operating under divine favor, whatever he does prospers. Genesis 39 verse 2. Genesis 39 verse 2. The Bible says, in Potiphar's house, Joseph was a prosperous man. Then, Genesis 39, verse 21 to 23. Genesis 39, verse 21 to 23. Even when Joseph landed in prison, again, God was with him, and whatever he did, prospered. When a man is operating under divine favor, anything he touches will begin to succeed. It will begin to prosper. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 to 8. Ah, thank you, Father. Ah, the Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said that which was introduced into you while you were sleeping had been removed tonight. Thank you, Savior. Daddy said there's someone here tonight. He said, the cause of your delay has been dealt with right now. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. The Bible tells us that when a man puts his trust in the Lord. It will be like a tree planted by the riverside. He said, whatsoever he does shall prosper. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Do you know that you can sell pure water and become a billionaire? Oh, if God is with you, anything you touch will prosper. If you can sell firewood and become a billionaire. Whatever he does shall prosper. In the name that's above every other name, your prosperity begins now. <laughs> Number six. When a man is operating under divine favor, his promotion is certain. There may be a delay. Like in Genesis 40, verse 1 to 23 Genesis 14 verse 1 to 23 the Bible tells us that ah, after Joseph interpreted the dream to some uh, people and he told the one that was going to be in the court of Pharaoh he said when you get back to your uh, position please remember me and the Bible said oh the man just forgot him for two years he forgot 
the one who had done him good. But that's because the time wasn't right yet. When the time came, and the one who has forgotten remembered. There are many of us who are here tonight. We've done good to several people. In a time of trial, they have forgotten us. They don't even want to see us. They don't want to help us at all. But I have good news for you. Things are about to change. All those who should help you, who have forgotten you, tonight they will have a dream. God will send them a dream so that by the time they wake up, they'll be looking for you. When a man is operating under divine favor, his promotion may be delayed, but it will surely come to pass. In Genesis 41, verse 38 to 40, Genesis 41, verse 38 to 40, the Bible says, finally, they brought Joseph out of the prison. And Pharaoh said, now, we can't find another man as wise as this. The Spirit of God is in him. Therefore, let him, let's put him in charge. You know, Psalm 75, verse 6 to 7, Lord is speaking to someone here. He said, as you begin to pay your tithe fully, he will so move you from not enough to more than enough. I rejoice with whoever this one is. The Lord said, there is someone here tonight, he said, those who said that we will soon see his end shall wait in vain. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's a special case. The Lord said there's someone here tonight, he said, any time it is your turn, they will say no more. He asked me to tell you, I will change all that now. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said for the rest of the year, one success will follow another in quick succession for you. Isaiah 75 verse 6 to 7, Isaiah 75 verse 6 to 7 tells us that promotion does not come from the east or from the west or from the south. He said, God is the judge. He raises up one and pulls down another. God, the great promoter, will bring your promotion speedily in Jesus' name. And like I've told you before, from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, when the Almighty God decides to promote you, He keeps on promoting can take you to any height. It can take you to places you, you, you never dreamt possible. He just keeps on promoting. After all, his hands are everlasting arms. If human beings promote you, they can bring you down. If newspapers promote you, one day they will turn against you. But when God promotes you, he keeps promoting you forever. And I have good news for somebody here. Your promotion is beginning right now. Everything that has been denied you shall be restored sevenfold in Jesus' name. And finally, number seven. When a man is operating under divine favor, he will surely reach the top. There's no way you can keep down somebody who is operating under divine favor. In Genesis 41 verse 44, Genesis 41 verse 44, the Bible said, Pharaoh said to Joseph, he said, I am Pharaoh. 
And I'm saying to you, Joseph, in the land of Egypt, nobody will lift his hand or foot without your permission. He said, they must all obey me, and I am saying, I will take the back seat. You rule. Nobody will do anything without your permission. Deuteronomy 28, verse 13, when you are operating under divine favor, Deuteronomy 28, verse 13, you will be head and not tail. You won't stop until you reach the top. And God is talking to someone here tonight. I say it one more time. That goal where God is taking you, you will reach there in Jesus' name. And by the time you read Mark chapter 10, the Bible says there's someone here tonight. He said, by the time the sun rises tomorrow, it will bring you a new breakthrough. Ah. I think God reserved the last for me. Amen and amen and amen. Hmm. And daddy said there's someone here tonight. He said, I will give you a taste of exceeding great joy. <laughs> daddy said there's someone here tonight. He said when next you share your testimony people will say surely God is great <laughs> by the time you get to Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 52 Mark 10 46 to 52 you hear Bartimaeus saying something about Jesus he said, Jesus, thou son of David. Now the Bible tells us that Jesus is the king of kings. And yet the Bible records for us that David is the father of the king of kings. Now that is absolute top. Many a times some people think that when they look right and they don't see anyone, they look left and they don't see anyone, and the door is locked, they think, Everything is okay. I can do whatever I like now. Uh, uh, uh. God is watching. I'm sure you had the testimony of a, a member of the choir. Not, not in our church. In another church. And the pastor had agreed with her that they should go to an hotel away from the town so they can meet and uh, do all kinds of horrible things. And they got to the hotel. They were about to enter the room. Again, the, the pastor looked right and he looked left. And nobody knows us here. But as they were about to enter the room, the girl said to the pastor, Pastor, we have looked right. We have looked left. We look behind, we look in front. But we didn't look up. I said, God is watching. That's how she escaped. God is watching. Do you know God is watching you? And it's good news because if he's watching you, that's why the enemy cannot reach you without him knowing. If he's watching you, that's why he can keep your going in and your coming out. If he's watching you, that's why he can monitor what you are doing so that he can make it to prosper. If he's watching you, that's why he can make you find favor anywhere you go but because he's watching that is why you cannot afford to offend him no matter how well you lock the door you can't lock God out he himself is the door when he wants to come in he doesn't need a key that is why People have asked me again and again, why do you keep on hammering holiness? I say, I have seen a little. 
in my few years in this world, I'm 70 years old now, I have seen people rise and fall. I have seen people promoted by God crashing to the ground, becoming nothing. Why? Because they offend God. And I can assure you of one thing. When I became born again, and I was running up and down, winning souls, coding one program after the other, some people say, take it easy. That's how they always start. Very soon, it will go down. Uh, I told them then, others may go down. This one is not going to go down. And I'm telling you, brethren, you have not seen anything yet. I'm going to keep on going higher and higher. Why? Because I have learned the secret. As long as there is no quarrel between me and God, the rest is easy. Everybody can be against me. If God is for me, I'm more than conqueror. That's why I'm appealing, to, I'm seriously appealing to those of you who are here tonight. Because it's a very, very special night indeed. If you are still living in sin, it is time to repent. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ before, come and do so tonight. If you say you are a Christian and you are still living in sin, you are a backslider, come and give your life back to Jesus Christ. Holiness is the master key. You live holy, the rest is settled. My precious beloved, the word of the Lord remains eternal, even from generations past. God remains true to his word. And this is the reason why we are still alive, because his word is eternal and it cannot fail. Has God said anything and it has not been established? Has it not come to pass in your life? Wait for it. His promises are infallible. It is of timidable things which is impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. God cannot disappoint. He has said all that he was going to do and he ensures that he keeps to his word in doing them. And that means God remains committed to his word because the word of God is the job description of God. The heavens and the earth may pass away, but God's word remains unchangeable. Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday today and forever in hebrews 13 verse 8 so says the scripture and we believe this eternal word because god cannot change and seeing he cannot change will remain glued will remain tied to his word and that is the reason why we have hope in christ because his word is infallible i'd like you to join us in this journey as you listen to god's servant pastor iadeboye on this channel like it to please embrace it in faith belief and get them by prayers and also see to it that you become a partaker of the eternal promises of god those promises those scriptures those insights the teachings the knowledge shared and the light brought to your way the words of prophecy words of knowledge the decrees over your life what god is saying concerning your life in this month of october i want you to know that it will not fall to the ground it will surely accomplish its purpose. Thank you for always staying tuned with us. And we also like you. If you're a new viewer, please hit the subscribe button. Join this community so that you won't lose out on anything. Hit the, the notification bell. This will help you to stay in touch with every of our regular uploads. And also don't forget to ensure that you like this video, share it to others, your loved ones, family and friends, and see to it that your life is blessed forever. We love you so much. We'd like to see you in our next video. God bless you. Thank you.